Hey there guys, Jules20 here and welcome back to Marble Mountain. Today's episode is going to be a bit shorter, but it is jam-packed full of all sorts of things. First thing is we're going to be fixing a whole bunch of the problems in Marble Mountain that has been very long overdue. Uh, we're going to be working on trying to get a profit and fixing a lot of the services, which I'll talk a little bit about very shortly. Um, and we will also do a live play where I can give you a bit more of an insight into things um, like all the problems and some of the different techniques that I'm doing to fix some of these problems. But we're also going to be looking at some of the entries for the Build in Marble Mountain competition that ended a couple of weeks ago. This was probably one of my favorite competitions that we've done. It was a build out in the middle of the desert and the builds were so unique and so fascinating. I really loved them, but we could only pick one. The person who won is Sully and he built this amazing truck stop that had this motorbike a saloon and a hoarder's house and it's just fantastic so we'll have a little bit more of a look at it in the live play as I place it down um, and we're also going to look at some of the entries too because they were just so fantastic I would really love to check them out so we'll talk about that in the time lapse in a little bit um, but first we are fixing some of the problems in Montana and uh, I have to admit I didn't come up with the fix myself this was uh, these these fixes came to me from another YouTuber by uh, the name of Impetra. I've spoken about him quite a bit, uh, but he actually downloaded Marble Mountain and fixed a whole bunch of the problems and basically set me the save game and showed me a little bit of the things that I could do to fix up some of those problems. And speaking of Impetra, we're actually going to be looking at a build that he did for Marble Mountain. I shared it on my, uh, I shared it on my stories a couple of weeks ago, but he ended up building a NASCAR racetrack out in the middle of the desert. So we're also going to check that out too. So all those people have been hanging out for a NASCAR racetrack that I've just been totally not interested in building. Uh, he ended up building that and it's just, it's so good. So we'll, sh we'll have a look at that in a little bit. But before we do get into the builds that I have not done, I am currently working on fixing a lot of the problems within Montana. And the problems mostly lie around the road connections to a lot of the buildings. And this is something that I didn't really know until Imperature pointed this out uh, when he sent me the save game. He noticed that a lot of the buildings weren't able to uh, receive any of the services so they weren't um, able to get any rubbish pickup or they weren't able to get any um, death care services um, mostly because they weren't connected to a road and that was because basically I would, like a lot of the buildings that I've placed down in Marlon Mountain I've placed them down against a road and then I've moved them away from the road using move it and that's all well and good uh, you know if you want your city to look like interesting or put buildings into different spots and that works 90% of the time but where it falls down is when you move a building from the road and then change the road in any sort of way so you might I don't know place another growable on that road like over where you've placed that other building or you might upgrade the road or you might drag the road a little bit uh, basically when you do that you then creates where well, you disconnect that building from the road and even though it doesn't say that the roads well, so it doesn't say that the building's being disconnected the services don't recognize that building as being connected to the road i'll explain this in a lot better detail in the live play but uh, the way of fixing that problem is simply by just dragging a road um, around those buildings so you saw that I dragged a couple of roads around some of the buildings that um, were no longer connected by the roads and that was um, that actually fixed a lot of the problems um, but another problem that I ended up encountering was to do with my warehouses and the way that all my industry is interacting with each other and I am desperate for some ideas from you guys because I would really love to fix this problem I don't know if it's something that is able to be fixed maybe I'm too deep in Marble Mountain to even attempt to fix it uh, but Unfortunately, that is what's going to be stopping me from making the profit that I should be making in Marble Mountain because we do actually have a lot of houses. We have a lot of industry. We have a lot of money making services within the city. However, we're still not making that much money and you will see me make will begin to make a bit of a profit within uh, this episode, but it's not manageable because of um, a lot of the different problems within the city. So we'll talk a bit more about that in the live play. Uh, something that does fix 
the problems a lot and you saw me work on it um, just before was the university currently well at that stage wasn't making any money in fact it was losing a whole bunch of money so I ended up just um, upgrading it quite a bit by placing down some more buildings and increasing the reputation and now that is currently making us a profit whereas before it was losing us a lot of money so that's quite good and then um, Imperature also gave me some advice about just um, the policies within the city and ended up making uh, the like a lot of the policies to do with education so that uh, citizens will actually prefer going to university which then increases the population at the university so that also helped out some of the problems too. And of course, making a profit is not the priority in Marble Mountain. The priority is definitely building up the province and making things look realistic. But for me personally, from like an enjoyment perspective, I really enjoy trying to play the game as if like I want to make some money and making sure that my services are still working. Uh, even though it's definitely not a priority and most people are here just to see the city get built uh, But for me, I, I just like knowing that the city is working and you know trying to work towards that is quite enjoyable for me So that's why I'm trying to work towards that and hopefully that might shed a bit of light for you guys, too And look I didn't record all the fixes I was doing I thought that would be better off tackled in the live play So I'll talk more about the things that I want to fix in Marble Mountain and um you know again seeking some advice from you guys I would really love some but um just to finish off the time lapse just working on some of the outskirts of Montana and I'll also do a bit of the train line too which is something that I wanted to fix up um, but I do want to talk about the build competition and say a huge huge thank you to everyone who got involved the builds were so fantastic again really unique spot for the build and we've got some really fantastic entries. I want to show you some of them right now. You can see them up on the top left corner. They were so diverse. We had a whole bunch of truck stops and little shanty towns which were just like super unique and had a whole bunch of character. Um, there was a whole bunch of industry as well which is something that I was really thinking about in, these lo in this location. I thought industry would be a really perfect fit. Somebody built this oasis that I thought was really unique, uh, something I didn't even consider, but uh, yeah, that was really cool. Again, the truck stops were probably like some of the closest to being um, put into this area because I just thought a truck stop would fit so perfect within a location like this. And, you know, because we're sort of like in between uh, cities, we're in between towns, and it's really in the middle of nowhere. So this would probably be like a perfect fit around here. Um, but then there was just uh, National Park as well with these big boulders which I thought was really unique and something that I want to put somewhere else in Marble Mountain so I don't want to I, I actually would really like to come back to something like this um, somebody also built some casinos like this um, like this whole little truck stop and small casino that sort of reminded me of Buffalo Bills um, on the outskirts of Las Vegas so look so so unique I really really loved looking at them um, it came down to this really amazing festival that Ferg built and I loved it so much that I actually will end up building that closer to the Reno Las Vegas inspired city uh, a little bit further on down the track but I do want to say a huge thank you to everyone who entered I feel very lucky to have such an amazing community that is back in the channel um, I really wish I could build and put in a whole bunch of your builds that you did but just know that I will be taking inspiration from so many of them because they were really quite fantastic. And if you are interested in ever being part of the next build competition, just let me know in the comment section if you are interested in seeing another competition like this because I am more than happy to do another one. But that is it for the time lapse. Let's get into the live play and we'll talk a bit more about all the problems and look at some of those amazing builds. Alright guys, here is the build that Sully did for the build competition. It is truly amazing. There's so much detail in this thing and it just fits in to Marble Mountain so well, particularly in this location, which by the way, I'm just going to show you whereabouts it sits within the map because it is smack bang in the middle of nowhere. So it's on this highway uh, in, the, in between Chinchilla, we've got Tumbleweed over here and this highway stretches all the way through the desert goes across the swamp land through Copper Falls. Montana is in the distance. It is in the middle of nowhere. I love it. So, by the way, this is like all under detailed. I want to work on this in a live stream, you know, blending this into the mountainside and putting some bits and pieces around here because I do want to start doing a driving video from 
this point all the way into Montana. I think that'd be so sick. Um, but for the time being, let's have a look at Sully's build. Now, I just want to let you know that I've just imported this into the save game and there's a whole bunch of things I need to fix up for Sully that he's mentioned, uh, but I'm not going to fix them up now and I haven't fixed them up yet because I've actually recorded the next episode and in the next episode we do like all you, you're gonna wait and see it's it's pretty nuts we do a lot of we do a lot of changes in the next episode um, but for the time being let's have a look at what Sully has been up to and then we'll talk about how the hell we're gonna make some money in this map <laughs> I'm gonna need some advice as well uh, but guys look at this this is just so insane the detail is just so insane so we've got this truck stop here with this weighing station, which is just so cool. Um, I really love this. Something I do need to fix up for him is I need to get rid of this railing so that, you know, we've got this parking on the side, which is just, I mean, I didn't even think about doing something like that, but that is really quite cool. Um, and I really love the way that these houses back onto this service station and like these little dirt roads that snake in between everywhere. Like I love this little spot that he's created for the, billboard I mean really amazing and this little community over here I mean who the hell lives around here I mean if you're somebody who gets into the wiki please hit up the wiki page and write something about this place because it is very very unusual so many so much trash behind these people's places <laughs> I really like it and then we've got this really great pathway around here that snakes into what is um, what he described as like a biker saloon. So he wants me to stick a whole bunch of Harley Davidson props over here, which I think would fit in really well. It's just so cool. So we've got a little bit of work to do, like blending in, blending it into the rest of the environment. But I mean, it's truly something that I wanted to place in an area like this, but I didn't really know how to tackle it. I knew there was going to be a lot of detail work to put in here. Oh, this looks like a little swamp marshland as well. It's just really, really awesome. And then it just continues. So over here, we've got this, what he described as an American pickers type area where, you know, a lot of people are just collecting trash and, you know, come in here and buy old antiques from around the area, that sort of thing, which I think is really cool. I don't think that's meant to be like that. But yeah, truly amazing job. Thank you so much, Sully. I love that this is now part of Marble Mountain. And if you guys want to get involved in the next one or want to see another build competition, please hit us up because I'd love to do another one. Um, and speaking of builds that aren't mine, so that's that's Sully's. Oh, by the way, look at that profit there, guys. We're going to talk about that very shortly. Um, I just want to show you another build that was not built by me, but this is done by Impetro who created this speedway and it is just so magnificent. I love it. Um, he originally placed it in a different location, which was over here, but I think that I wanted to put it over in an area like this. And by the way, this is not its final resting space. This is me just putting it down to, um, you know, think about where I want to put it. But um, eventually we're going to have like a Reno inspired build over here. And I think that this would work really well in an area like that. But again, this is also temporary. The only thing that's going to be staying in this area is this guy. Um, this is <laughs> this is my power station at the moment. Um, but, oh, we're just going to lose a couple of FPS, but I will just ignore that. Um, Impetra just did such an incredible job at creating this speedway. A lot of people have been asking for me to build a speedway. Um, I have no idea how these things work or I've got no interest in NASCAR or anything like that. So really glad that Impetra take took on that that um, challenge for me and built it. And it is just amazing. If you want to see the build, it, it, he, he recorded a time lapse for it. So um, go and check it out. It's really quite amazing. Um, so that's now in Marble Mountain and we'll find a better spot for it. A little later on down the track. Um, so look, in the next episode, we're getting rid of this bad boy and we're demolishing all this. This is going to be a, a huge, huge change for Mama Mountain. Um, but I do want to talk about some of the money-making situations in Mama Mountain because it's not good. Um, and I would really love your opinion and help on it. Um, so something that we have done is we fixed a bunch of the services within Montana. And the way that we fix that up is, and I think this is probably the best example, um, so these guys were not getting any death care service 
or any healthcare because they weren't technically attached to the road. And that's because I placed them on a road like this and then I dragged them away from the road using Move It. And then they basically couldn't have any services getting to them anymore. Um, so what I did is I just dragged a road so that it was connected in here. And I've done that for a lot of different buildings. A lot of them are totally hidden and you wouldn't even notice that there's a road um, in there. Um, some of them a little bit more obvious that there's a road now connecting them up, but I think that the payoff is definitely well worth it. And we've still got a lot of work to do on that. So the problem that I was encountering was that there were dead bodies waiting to be picked up. God, that sounds morbid, but there was dead bodies waiting to be picked up and my hearses weren't able to access that building. And you could actually tell that that was happening when you were to click on a crematorium. Uh, that problem is still happening a little bit, but see how we've got six out of seven hearses in use. But then we're switching from six to seven and no vehicles are coming out to see that. See how that changes like that, but no vehicles are coming out? That's because somewhere around this area, we have more buildings that are not technically connected to the road. So vehicles are trying to come out of there and go to that building, but they're not able to make the connection because it's not technically connected to the road anymore. So it's my job to go through and find those buildings. Now, every now and again, you will still get one coming out, but there, there's worse places in the map. So for instance, I believe over here, we're having the very same problem with um, this one over here because we've got zero ambulances in use over here. We've got zero over here as well. Whereas there's definitely sick people around that we do need, that we do need to, you know, help <laughs> because we're basically not releasing any vehicles. So there's still, there's still buildings that I need to, you know, make that connection with. Uh, and I think a really good indication of that is over here where my industry is not functioning the way that it should. So this one has just been stuck on zero and switch into one for forever. If I was to speed it up. So you can tell that my industry is not functioning the way that it should. And that's because there's just some link in the system where there is just no connection. And that is incredibly frustrating. And that is what's causing such a loss in money. Even though we are making a little bit of a profit now, there is a big link in the system. And I think that's because I've dragged so many growable in industrial buildings away from the roads that we are seeing just such a limited amount of supplies going around. And it's killing the chain which is very annoying. I mean, every now and again, you have some industry that is making a fair bit of profit, but like placing this one down, it's doing absolutely nothing. A lot of my warehouses do absolutely nothing. It's very, very, very frustrating. So I have to fix it up somehow. It's a bit of a work in progress, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, even just dragging those roads in some areas has fixed the problem a lot, which is amazing. Um, and one, really good example of how I can fix it up. And look, I'm just going to show you this. I've already fixed this in the next save, but I just wanted to show you this in person. But my fishing industry isn't working. If I was to click on this fish market, nothing is happening. And that is because I have placed this building on this road and then I have created this parking lot and basically disconnected this building from this road. This should still be working even though, so this should still be working because I've got a fish factory right here. I've got fish industry right here that have zero freight in use. See how it's going zero to one. Now watch this. If I was to click on this, change where it sits. Let's say I want it to sit around, let's find a place where I can connect it. All right, let's connect it there. Now watch this. See that guy? See all those trucks now? And now we have business. Like that is very satisfying to see. And that's because this is now technically connected to that road. Now I believe I could probably start moving this around so that it's connected to here, back where it was before. 
let's say it was about there. Now, I still think that these trucks will still be in use because it's now connected to this road. But then if I was to then all of a sudden decide to move some of these nodes around, or if I was to drag this away from here, or just change the way that this is connected, then I believe that this will no longer work the way that it should. But, um, and look, I, I think it's already stuffed up. So that is just something to consider when you're playing around with your industry and, you know, wanting to get a bit of realism, but also trying not to, uh, you know, totally wreck your profit or trying to wreck the way that your city is functioning. I have to go through and fix a whole bunch of different things. There's different ways of fixing this problem rather than, uh, you know, placing in areas that you don't want it to sit. It's definitely a work in progress. If there's any mods that you guys can think of that can help me out with that system, I would really love your suggestions because it's driving me nuts and I would really love to fix that problem. Um, especially with my industry, because I, I think that half the fun with this map is, you know, making sure that everything is connected up and is functioning the way that it should. But we have some serious, serious problems with the link in a lot of my industry. And it's killing me. It's totally killing me. So I would really love some suggestions, guys. Please hit me up. Um, but look, I think that's going to do it for this episode. It's um, a little bit of a strange one. It's a bit of a midweek episode, isn't it? But <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it nonetheless. Um, again, a big shout out to the, those guys who got involved in the last build competition. I really did enjoy looking at all your builds. And I love, love Sully's build over here. So thank you so much, Sully. And congratulations. Alright guys, that is it for today's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. It's very much appreciated. I want to give a special shout out to some of my patrons like Expanded Digital, The Engineer, and Corey Mollett. Guys, thank you all so much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!